What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. We have a serious military problem here as Russia and, well, the Wagner Group is moving troops on the border of Poland. And Poland says here that they're rushing troops to the border after what they're saying that Belarus violated the Belarusian airspace. Okay. And, um, this, this is very significant, especially because as they rush these potentially thousands of troops there, as the Wagner Group has been building troops and military equipment right outside of Poland here for several days now. And a lot of people are wondering, are they going to attack this strategic point right outside or right inside of Poland here? This is very particularly alarming, especially because the U.S. has about 10,000 U.S. armed troops in Poland. In Poland. Poland is part of NATO. And remember here that the NATO pact says if anybody attacks any part of any NATO country, including Poland or the new countries that are just coming in here, Finland and Sweden or the United States or any of the 31, which will now be 32 countries here. If you attack a NATO country such as Poland, it would be a declaration of war against all NATO countries, including the United States. Okay, And with Poland being right there on the border, you can see Poland here right on the border of Belarus and Ukraine. Okay, this is why it's a very strategic point. In fact, I'm going to have a colonel here that I'll show you an interview on why this point that Putin or the Wagner Group may be trying to take is even more strategic here. Why they might be trying to take this. But you can see Poland is basically the main country right there between Belarus and Ukraine on this eastern front. Okay, or to the west of Belarus of Ukraine, but to the east of the west, however, which way you want to look at it, right? Poland is right smack there in the middle of it, okay? A very strategic front. And Poland is rushing troops there. U.S. troops could potentially be there as part of the NATO forces. And Belarus is denying that they violated the Belarusian airspace. But Belarus or Poland is saying, yes, they did violate the airspace. And the Wagner Group has been amassing troops right outside this strategic point, right outside the Poland border for several days now. A lot of people think that the Wagner Group or Putin is going to send in troops to attack the strategic point. Take a listen to why this strategic point is so important to Colonel Cedric Layton. How significant is it that these Wagner forces are moving closer to Poland's border? I think it's very significant, Paula. And you know, what's interesting about this, this is near the area that's called a Suwaki Gap. And the Suwaki Gap is this area between Lithuania, Poland, and Belarus uh, that is a really a vulnerable point uh, for the NATO forces because it allows the Russians, it's an area where the Russians uh, have transit rights, or at least in the past had transit rights, to take equipment and men into the Kaliningrad Oblast, which is an enclave of Russia that uh, Russia has had since basically the end of World War II. And that area is one that the Russians want to protect because that's where their uh, Baltic Sea Fleet is. They, they want to also pre be able to project power into the Baltic. Uh, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to make sure the Russians are in the Wagner Group is trying to make sure that they can maintain that connection to the Kaliningrad Oblast. Uh, if they can do that, then that, of course, puts forces at risk for NATO. And they also, in addition to keeping maritime forces at risk, of course, they're trying to keep uh, Polish forces at risk and at least tie down Polish forces in the northeastern part of their country, whereas in the southeastern part, that's the part that faces Ukraine. And that's the area uh, that, of course, could also see some action if the Russians move forward in that direction as well. It seems like a significant development should NATO 
be concerned about potentially being drawn in here? Yes, absolutely, because what the Russians are trying to do is they're trying to set uh, tripwires up so that if they, if they do the kinds of things where they uh, you know, provoke a particular incident or do something like that, at least from a propaganda standpoint, they can say, uh, look, we, uh, we were attacked by NATO or uh, NATO forces are responding to us in a very provocative way. Uh, and it may not come to a shooting war, and hopefully it doesn't, but the risk is certainly there, and the risk has just gone up because the Wagner Group is still acting as a proxy for the Russians at this point. Now, if you've seen my videos with Colonel Tony Schaefer, I just published part two of that video, part one and part two. Um, I mentioned to him in there that I could potentially see the Wagner Group potentially, if they really want to take this strategic point in Poland, which I think would be suicide, for Russia to do that. But if they absolutely have their hearts set on it, what they could try to do is they could send in the Wagner group to do that. And Putin could say, well, you know, I didn't do it. The Wagner group did it. And remember, the Wagner group just tried to mutiny on us. So this Wagner group has kind of gone rogue. And, you know, it it wasn't us. It's the Wagner group. You, you can't blame us. You can't blame blame Putin. You can't blame Russia. It's this Wagner group that did it. Look, they just literally tried to mutiny on me, Putin, if Putin was saying this. Okay. And uh, Colonel Tony Shaver said, well, Jimmy, now you're thinking like a Russian. I'm thinking, yeah. Um, but I could see Putin kind of drumming up a plan like that. And then NATO would be in a little bit of a predicament because they're thinking, do we start World War III over this? Um, Remember that Russia has nukes, North Korea has nukes, China has nukes, and you're in a very, in a pickle there, because uh, I'm not saying that we're going to start launching nukes, because we wouldn't, I wouldn't think we would, but we would definitely, or Poland would definitely, at the bare minimum, fight back to defend their land. Poland's a member of NATO. The NATO pact, the NATO treaty says that if somebody attacks any NATO land, all the countries are supposed to defend it, Article 5. So you can start to see here now one step leading to another. And if you remember the beginning of the war in Ukraine, what happened is the same type of stuff that's happening now. Russia started building up troops right outside the Ukraine border. That's what's happening now. The Wagner Group is building up troops, maybe even Russian troops there. You know, it's hard to tell who's who and what's building up there. But there's troops building up outside this Poland strategic point. So they're building up troops outside the Poland border. They've been building up, building up. Now the troops are moving closer to the border. It's a very similar situation, which is what happened with um, Ukraine. Okay. And I remember... A lot of people saying, oh, there's not, it's not going to happen. There's no, not going to be a war. And again, just as a realist, I'm thinking, why are they keep building up troops? And then it became over 100,000 troops there. And I'm thinking, well, just again, just as a realistic point of view, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter what side of the political aisle. And again, I don't even know what political side, who was what, where, you know, before the war. But it's just thinking, well, as a realist, if there's 100,000 plus troops outside of a country's border and they're lining up tanks and they're lining up all this ammunition they're lining up you know stockpiles of food and there's 100 plus troops outside this border what do you think they're planning on doing with all those troops and i remember a bunch of people saying oh you know that's just warmongering that's just fear mongering they're not gonna do anything and then lo and behold they started to create false flags which are basically you know reasons for them to go in and start the war reasons that were false and then lo and behold they started to create these reasons on why they needed to go into ukraine to start the war that happened the u.s actually warned about that happening before they happened they're going to create false flags for them reasons for them to go in that happened and then they went in and the war started okay the question is is that is this going to happen now with poland you would honestly want to say, why on earth would they want to do this? Why would Russia or the Wagner Group want to do this? I get that Russia might want to take this strategic point for whatever reasons they're 
and their mind thinking. But Russia has had a hell of a time, almost a year and a half in Ukraine. Okay, they've actually lost ground from what they've had at the beginning. Remember, they had about 25 percent of the land at the beginning of Ukraine that they took over. Now it's maybe down to about 15 percent of the land. So they've actually lost 10 percent of the ground that they took at the beginning of the war. It's been even, you know, Colonel Tony Schaefer. We talked about this in part one, I think, of the video. Um, and then it's been relatively kind of stagnant since then that you know it's been kind of uh you know neither side has been you know giving or taking here recently now russia is going to be bringing in a lot of troops here now that they've uh raised their conscription age they're going to be drafting a whole bunch more men we'll talk about that in the interview as well you got to watch this i'll link you to this video here in a minute but um why would they want to bring in nato why would they want to bring in 31 or 32 more countries including the united states including all these other countries unless there's something a lot more sinister at hand. Now, don't forget, though, that Russia just met with North Korea and China as well. North Korea has been threatening nuclear annihilation against the United States. If you've just seen that video I did, uh, North Korea just threatened nuclear annihilation against the United States. And then there's China which is not exactly our best friend either, and also has nuclear weapons. So does Russia plan on involving us or involving NATO and then using nuclear weapons? Is this maybe their get NATO, get Poland involved so that they can actually start using nuclear weapons? Or what is their status quo here? What is their end game here? You got to think, two steps ahead to say, what is their plan here? I mean, do they really just want to take one little strategic point in Poland? Because you got to think ahead here because this is going to involve invading a portion of another country, which you can't really just do. You can't just go in and say, oh, hey, Poland, we're going to come and take this strategic point. Don't mind us. Because it's not exactly how war works, especially when that country is part of a pact with 30 plus other countries, which was going to be a declaration of war against those other countries. Yeah, so you can see how things are escalating very rapidly and kind of out of control. And this is where you got to kind of wonder how unstable is Putin or the Wagner group? Are they, how much of it is, are they working together? Are they not? And are, would they really do this stuff? Or is it a distraction for something else? And if it's a distraction, what are they distracting from? Yeah. So by all means, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here on all these things going on here right now. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so I will keep you up to date here. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here on our YouTube channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for liking and please share these videos here so everybody needs to know about this information. You can click here to watch part one of my interview with Colonel Tony Schaefer. Click here to see part two of my interview with Tony Schaefer. If you haven't seen him, Start with part one because there's literally some really great insight onto what's going on here right now. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.